Southridge High School has a big obstacle in its way on the road to Indianapolis. They face l and 28-1 and ranked third in the state. The Raiders have a twin guard line that sparks their potent attack. Rick and Ron Petberg scored a combined 29 points, and the Raiders walk over Austin 79-59 this morning. Todd Yoakum is the big scorer on the inside. He had 22 this afternoon. l and on the other hand, is a study and roll reversal. This Goliath actually should be a David. L&M is the smallest school in the Sweet 16. Lions and Marco combined barely have a population of 1,000 people. The Braves also let their big man handle the basketball as much or more than the guards. This afternoon, Indiana bound Jeff Oliphant, the coach's son, scored 20 of his 26 points in the second half to lead a 76-71 win over Evansville Bossy. Forward Tony Patterson headed for Purdue, chipped in with 23. It's l and and Southridge for the right to go to Market Square Arena coming your way next. Four Sports presents the ISHAA Evansville Semi-State Finals. Live from Robert Stadium in Evansville, it's the IHSAA Evansville Semi-State Final Game. Tonight, the Southridge Raiders against the LM Braves. Hi again, everybody. I'm Bob Ramsey. I'll be joined tonight by the head coach at Central High School here in Evansville, Morris Clark, and a great matchup coming your way. The Cinderella story of the whole state, the LM Braves against the Southridge Raiders. With me right now is the head coach at LM, Tom Oliphant. And Tom, first of all, is the team rested enough? Yeah, they rested real well this afternoon in the hotel. We brought them in a little food to eat. And they are pretty good about it. They stayed down, got a lot of rest this afternoon. I think everybody in this area and everyone around the state really, really respects your ball club because they're under an awful lot of pressure being from a small school, talk of Milan and all that other stuff, and an article in Sports Illustrated. They seem to handle the pressure very well. Now, they've done a good job with the, all the pressure the last two years. And it's kind of built up a little bit this year and with all the publicity. Uh, they've done a good job, and I'm very happy with that. Talk a little bit about Southridge. Southridge, very fine ball club, and uh, they've had a tremendous season, and they're going to have an even better season next year, I imagine. But anyway, uh, they're a great ball club. They've got uh, some good uh, players, very balanced, and they uh, look like they play well together, very unselfish. Got a 6'8 kid in the middle. So uh, we expect a very tough ball game tonight. I've never seen a team, high school or college, where the big men handle the basketball as much or as well as your club does. Well, we expect our big men to do a little bit of everything, rebound, score, uh, handle the ball, make assists, and uh, that's what they're out there for, along with our other players who are, you know, good role players for us. So it's a, it's a more than just a two- or three-man team for L&M. Well, Tom, best of luck to you, and thank you for stopping by. Thank you. Tom Oliphant, head coach of the L&M Braves. They come in tonight 28-1 and one and rank number three. Now joining us is Gary Duncan, who's the head coach at Southridge. And Gary, I guess... You might be a little nervous now, but if there's a coach around the state of Indiana who can smile, it's you. You've come this far with a team that doesn't have a senior. You have to be kind of happy about that. I really am. Uh, they've matured and come a long ways, and uh, they played a real fine ball game this afternoon against a, a good Austin ball club. So I, I feel like we've, we've got good, go good momentum going in the tournament, and I just feel like that uh, if we can play a smart ball game tonight, it could be a nice ball game. What did you do during the break? Well, we took it very easy. We uh, had our, our, a meal early and uh, been resting, and we've had uh, Steinhardt boring ice all day, and he's, uh, he's going to try to go this evening. We're just going to see whether he can get the job done. If he can't, then we have to do something else. Now, the guards, uh, you have two very fine guards, and they go up against two fine guards for L&M, but L&M's key seems to be the big people. What do you do to start them? Well, I feel like that uh, right now their, their offensive boards is uh, exceptionally strong, and if they... Uh, if we can get them to have an off-shooting night uh, where, and then keep them off the offensive boards, then I believe we can play with them. But if we, uh, they have a good shooting night or we let them get a lot of second and third shots, uh, then I feel like we're going to be in trouble. I also feel like we've got to make them beat us from uh, 18 feet, if at all possible, and keep them out of the paint. Now, they played hard and they played late. Is there anything in your game plan because they haven't had as much rest? Well, right now, we uh, haven't thought too much about that. We're going to let the game just kind of take care of itself. And, I told the kids tonight that uh, really I think this comes right down to intelligent type ball and uh, you don't have time to prepare for LM or the second game and uh, 
So we just talked about their personnel, what we're going to try to do defensively, and uh, and if we have to make adjustments as the game goes along, uh, we will. Gary, best of luck to you tonight. All right, thanks a lot. Gary Duncan, head coach at Southridge High School. They come in tonight 22-4 and four on the season after winning 79-59 earlier today over Austin High School, and really they were not tested as much as L&M was earlier tonight. L&M 28-1, as we told you, 76-71, game one against Bossy. The keys, really the big people on the inside for L&M, as we told you in the open. Tony Patterson is heading towards Purdue. He had 23 in the opener. Chad Grounds, the man in the middle, as Coach uh, Morris Clark told us in the first game, uh, probably a very good Division II player coming up. He had 17, and Jeff Oliphant, who played very well, especially in the second half with 26 points. The keys, on the other hand, for Southridge High School is Todd Yoakum, the big man in the middle. He scored 22, and the guards, the Patford twins, Rick and Ron. We'll be back with more pregame information, the starting lineups, and the first quarter of play here in the finals of the Evansville Semi-State. But first, these messages. You're with us here live from Robert Stadium on 44. We're back at Robert Stadium, about six minutes away from game time. The finals of the Evansville Semi-State between the l and Braves and the Southridge Raiders. There won't be as many people here tonight at Robert Stadium. Of course, some of the Austin people have gone home, and not as many of the bossy supporters are on hand, but we've picked up a few folks who weren't here this afternoon. L&M has brought, I think, the entire Green County area with them. They really have a lot of supporters, and uh, that really helps uh, Tom Oliphant and his club, but don't forget that the Huntingburg community and the people around Southridge have come out in style. Coach... I think this uh, this game is going to be uh, very interesting because the styles are a little bit the same, although the height advantage definitely goes to L&M. It um, sure sure does. And um, tonight, though, L&M plays a zone defense. Southridge will probably open up man to man, and they want to put pressure on the guard. That they, they do not want the easy pass in to the big guys there, and um, that that's a little bit different. And that they won't. Um, neither team will be pressing. Um, unless it, you know that they would have to and um, you know really neither neither team is a young pressing type team and uh, so I'm really looking forward to that part of the game just watching that the, that the different styles it's gonna be a power game on LM's part and uh, for Southridge it's finesse passing you know moving taking that good shot so it ought to be a, a really interesting game as far up for us coaches now, Morris uh, Tom Oliphant told us that his team is not tired that they had a good rest at the hotel but you would feel with as hard as they had to go can by, uh, compared to uh, as hard as Southridge had to go in the first game that that might be a slight disadvantage. They played a little bit later than they had figured on and they didn't get as much rest as they did. Do you think maybe Southridge will pick up the tempo a little bit? Well, they're going to put the, um, you know, pressure on them. But they're going to make them work for everything tonight. But that there won't be any, anything easy. And uh, but, you know, I'm sure Tom's talking about that, you know, that that old adrenaline will get flowing here as I was talking about earlier. Once that ball is tossed up, both of them are really going to go after it. So I think that that's going to be one key. But still, I do think that, you know, l &M might get tired here tonight. Uh, would that make you believe that uh, Southridge may try and for or force some presses on them? Well, Southridge is really not that good of a pressing team, what I have seen of them. And uh, whenever we played played against them. So um, I think that they will try to half court, you know, really put the press, I mean, that the pressure on them, make them work, work hard for every, every, everything. And uh, so, uh, but again, you know, whenever you go up and down, down, down that court, uh, um, you know, several times, you know, that, you know, that your legs start getting tired. And that's, you know, if, if you'd happen to see LM start, you know, missing shots, make them, you know, just a little bit shorter than normal, that's whenever you can tell that, you know, that that tiredness starts setting in. Fatigue, we have seen in, in, in the past around here, late, late cramps and all these kinds of, kinds of things that, that happen in, in that final game. Now, you have uh, seen Southridge play in the first game. They really weren't tested as far as uh, Austin made one run at the end of the second quarter and a little bit at the uh, beginning of the third, but they really weren't tested as much. Can they handle pressure late in the ball game if it's tight? Yes, yes, that they can. I feel like that. And also, LM is not a pressure type, you know, team that they use at their power game. So um, I think that that ball handling and the passing goes to Southridge. That the power game, 
as far as the size the um, you know it's kind of like all, almost men against young men I don't say boys young men um, elephant you know Patterson that they're men out there that they're division one basketball players Southridge right now doesn't have division one basketball player on the court so that that part of it you know is a advantage for LNM but Southridge played awfully well that they shot well today they are well coached you know coach Duncan has a, has them ready um, Steinhardt is um, going to try to play tonight and I think the Southridge will you know really give you know LNM all the all that they want and they might beat them now I think probably one young man who has an awful lot of uh, on his mind and an awful big challenge is Andy Noss. Yes, you know, he has his hands full. But again, you know, young kids uh, all of a sudden can come, you know, to the, you know, to that top and really do do the number. And um, you know, you you know, it's hard to say sitting over here right now what is going through his mind or that the other kids. Uh, you know, LM come, you know, was you know came down here thinking that if we can beat Boston, then we can we can go to the, you know to the state. Uh, whether or not that, that really comes true tonight and they don't go out and they don't look sharp and you know Southridge I have you know played them now for three years straight and every time that we play them that they're always so sharp and they pass the well you know pass the ball so well and they really make it tough on you to really you know defense so I'm you know curious to see how well you know e you know each team gets off you know that you know as far as the um, start of the game I think that's again the key which I talked about today I think a key here tonight is which team can um, you know start the game well in um, th this afternoon's games even you know, that the team that um, got off to the um, you know best start won the one today give me a, an indication give us a little insight of what's going on now in these locker rooms what are the coaches saying to these teams again you know you just go over your defensive assignments your your uh, your offenses you know if they open up into a um, zone we will run this if they open up into a man we will run this you know, now you got to watch this type key. You know, you know, you go over your game plan just one more time because again, if these kids, when they come out here, that their minds going every which way that that they're looking up into the stands, and so again, I just every time, you know, I will I will go, you know, through before the game, whenever that that that, that they come back out, and even be before we take the you know the um, the um, floor, you got to review review. Kids are just you know they're just 17, 18 year old kids. And you've got to keep reminding them what they're going to do, what their assignments are. But again, LM has been here, you know, that they have a fine record, and that, you know, that, you know, that they're not, what, 28 and 1 now by, you know, by not being able to handle the um, pressure. And Southridge, again, has played well. They have a good ball club, and today that they show that they're a good ball club, and they deserve to be here in, in this championship game. Let's talk about high school basketball around the state. We go to the Final Four next next week in Indianapolis, and one of these two teams will represent the area. Is basketball down in southwestern Indiana as strong as it is in the rest of the part of the state? Well, at times, and it, at um, certain times, it, 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 it is. Uh, with the Fort Wayne's, the Lafayette Jeff area, and the uh, Roosevelt area. But, you know, in, in the past here, uh, you know, we we haven't done bad. You know, Bossy has had some fine teams here. Terre Haute South has, has had some good teams. And then Ben Sins here uh, recently. So we, you know, we do our part down here also. We don't have quite the population as up north, but, you know, we, we do come up with some fine teams. And l &M has a good chance, if they get by here tonight, of winning the M State. And so that plays, you know, that, that, that says something. It's, you know, that says something for the small guy. For the, uh, that's what is nice about the Indiana High School Basketball Tournament is that the um, small guy has a chance also. Yeah, that, that brings up a point. There has been discussion. I don't know how much of it's serious, but let me get your view as a coach here in the state of Indiana to go to the dual class system as they have in many states uh, like Illinois this weekend. The Class A tournament is going on over there. Would it damage Hoosier hysteria to go to a two class system? I sure think that that it, it, it would. I think that uh, this is this is the tournament. This is what it's all about. And no one can say, well, if uh, we were in, in the uh, you know in the A um, league there, that we you know that we could have been just as good. Uh, this way, that there's no that there's no doubt, and there's one champion in the uh, state of state of Indiana. There's not two or, or um, three different class champions. That's what I really like about it, and I guess what the other coaches like about it. Ladies and gentlemen, from Robert Stadium, the Harrison High School Band and our national anthem.
Evansville Harrison High School Band and our national anthem. The teams are getting set to come back out. Southridge 22 and 4, coached by Gary Duncan. The first game today, they beat Austin 79 to 59. Ellen M. Braves 28 and 1, ranked number three in the state. Tom Olive and coached them to a 76-71 game in game two over Evansville Bossy. Let's talk a little bit about the pressure that these young men might be going through. Here you have, especially for an LM team, you have uh, most of the population of these two towns here. And Southridge has a very, very fine contingent over on that side and an awful lot of people from around the Huntingburg area. What kind of pressure does a 17, 18-year-old young man feel? Well, you know, that I think that the kids today are so excited about, you know, about being here that they really don't think about the um, pressure as far as their, their fans. Whenever you know that they're behind you, then that really gives you um, confidence and uh, there's nothing more, but I think the high school kid has so much excitement, so much adrenaline going in them whenever that, that they come out here. And uh, once that game gets going, they really forget about the fans. I mean, that's that part of it. You're really concentrating about what you're doing. And I noticed that today about LM. They are an experienced ball club and they really played well. And uh, I don't think that, you know, that that, you know, is will, will really bother them tonight. You know, we talk about the big people up front for LM, but there was a stretch when Riley Padgett was out of that first ball game that uh, Bossy made a big run at him. He's one of the keys, although he doesn't shoot, he really keeps control of the whole thing. Yes, um, I think that Joe Mullen felt like, you know, that they could put more um, pressure on, on on them, you know, on their inside guys and kind of leave leave him open. And I um, commented, you know, that I don't believe that their guards are even going to shoot the ball. And, and about that time, that kid makes two of them straight. It doesn't seem as if the uh, guards want to shoot that much, but I believe on the afternoon, their guards were three of three, if I'm not mistaken. They made almost everything they shot. Uh, I was talking with Coach Mullen later after the um, game, and uh, he said that uh, whenever he saw a um, videotape of, of their play, that their guards shot four air balls. And then tonight, you know, here today, <laughs> they, they go in and they score three, um, three straight baskets on them. So, again, you just never know. Again, that's, 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 that's tournament time. That's the nice thing about this tournament. You know, the kids, you know, a lot of times kids who, who you don't think is going to do well come out and really set, you know, play well. And uh, he goes home very, feeling very, very good about himself and uh, his family. And, you know, it's, uh, it's a great thing that, you know, whenever you play in the tournament that you never forget this. And these kids here for both schools coming down here for the um, first time, that they'll, nail, that they'll not forget this. It, it, it may be a, a long time before, the, before they come back down. The first time in the tournament is, as you said, for these two teams, this is a very big experience, not only for the players, but what kind of experience are these coaches getting now? Well, Coach Duncan has um, been here once before with, uh, with um, Salem, and I believe that was in 1971 that he, that, 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 you know, he came, came down here. But I think as, as, as a coach, it, it really gives you a lot of confidence that you know that you are that your program is is good enough to um, you know you know that you're doing the the job to um, to get your team down here and that's what it's all about for well, these two coaches now they're thinking now if i get this one we're going to the state and as a coach you know there's nothing more than you'd like to do is to get your team to the state and if you get to the state you got a chance of winning it so that's what it, what it's all about that's why you spend all all those hours going out you know scouting and the you know, working hard with you know, your team is to get that team in here and try to win. And again, that's what these coaches are so pleased about right now is that they do have their teams here. I think both of them are feeling the pressure of, you know, of, of the game tonight and talking with them, both of them. You know, I have heard some people say that when you make it to the Final Four, a little bit of the pressure is off. I can't understand that statement. Well, <laughs> it's so nice to be there, but I, I watched Coach Miller last year and I, th I thought he you know felt felt the pressure and um, as all of them would if you're human enough you know you get up there but I think that uh, you know we, we, we all like to, to to get there I think that maybe during 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 that week you, you know there's some of the other uh, pressures off as far as I have made it that the team's going up but then once you get up there and you go up to market you know market street you know uh, street there uh, square that you're really excited that that then again you would really feel feel that pressure I feel better once I get to the site. I think that the day before, you know, uh, the, the getting all your uh, details worked out and you know, getting everybody that, you know, the tickets are out and everything as far as your team and make sure everybody's, you know, there. 
And as far as, as that you spent a good, good week of um, practice, and everybody again is healthy, and I'm um, ready to go. I think once you would take, you know, would take, take the floor, then that some of that pressure's off. There's an awful lot of uh, different kind of pressures, unusual kind of pressures when you go up to Indianapolis too. The press attention, the coaches and players are constantly hounded uh, for interviews, and people are around and looking and digging for different stories. A kind of uh, pressure that's it's normally not there for a lot of these teams. Yes, and uh, I would just love Bob to feel that pressure. You know, <laughs> next year, the year after. I know working with Coach Russell how much that, you know, that he wanted that uh, pressure. Uh, we all want it. We all want to get up there and uh, to take to take a team up to the Final Four. I think that's a coach's dream, and uh, we all want to do that. And then another coach's dream is to ride that fire wagon home. Yes, I would imagine uh, both of these teams have those dreams on their mind, but they still have a ball game ahead of them. It's l and who won over Bossy. They came out of Terre Haute down to here in their regional win. And Southridge, after wins over Washington Catholic and North Harrison, came here to play Austin, and they beat them. We're ready for basketball. We'll be about 10 minutes late, but we're ready to go. Let's take a look at the starting lineups first. The Southridge Raiders out of Huntingburg, members of the Pocket Athletic Conference, they look like this. And one guard will be number 10, Rick Patberg. Rick averages 8.2 points a game. He teams up with his twin brother, Ron, averaging 9.7. Ron, 5'10", a junior. Rick, 5'9", a junior. In the middle is Andy Noss. Andy, 6'8", a junior, averaging 9.7 points a game and five rebounds. He really has an awful lot of pressure on him tonight. Uh, the forwards will be Todd Yoakum, number 40. Todd, 6'2", a junior, averaging 15 and a half points a game and 7.2 rebounds. And the other forward will be Ron Steinhardt, who will try it after being injured in the first game. He's got a little wrap on his ankle. Ron, 6'2", a junior. Averaging 8.6 points a game and 6.5 rebounds. They're under the direction of Gary Duncan. There you see him talking to the remainder of his team as they sit waiting to be introduced. Now for the LM Braves. 28 and 1, ranked third in the state of Indiana. You've heard all the stories and you've seen them in the first game. Here's how they look. Number 34, Tony Patterson. Will be one of the forwards. We got the positions uh, a little bit reversed. Tony Patterson, a forward, 23.4 points a game and 10.1 rebounds. He's joined up front by Jeff Oliphant, the other forward, 6'6 six, six and a half, a senior, 22.7 points a game and 11 and a half rebounds. In the middle, a man who played a key role for them in the first game, Chad Ground, 6'4, a senior, over 14 points a game and five rebounds. The guards, number 10, Riley Padgett, 5'9", a senior, six and a half points a game for Riley and just about two rebounds. And Mark Swaby will start tonight. Six foot, a senior, two and a half rebounds, uh, two and a half points a game and 1.4 rebounds. Tom Oliphant is the coach. There you see him there. Coached him over the win, 76-71, over Evansville Bossy. Looks serious, doesn't he? Yes, he does. He is as worried as his players are. The officials tonight will be Jerry Petro and Bob Beeson. They're going to have a fun game, and they have a they have a nice position to watch the game from yes. on the floor, and, and they'll have a good ball game to call tonight. They are introducing the squads now for the. Southridge Raiders, Jason Aarons and Phil Parker on the floor being joined by Tom Barrett who got some playing time today. You see the fans from both squads out there. Mike Hillsmeyer coming out, young man who got into some physical battles tonight. Kelly Ollinger now will come off the bench. There you see Kelly. He's 6'3 and a junior. Ted O'Brien who played an awful lot. And I think Ted played a key role in that first game, Morris. Yes, he did. He did a nice job out there, and that's what Coach Duncan was um, talking about. That really has helped with, by having that good bench strength. 
They're starting the lineups now, and you hear the applause for Rob Steinhardt, and he's limping awful heavily. Kind of curious about him to see how he can do it. He's going to give it a try, but he is definitely limping. Todd Yoakum, who had 22 points in the first game. In the middle is Andy Noss. He had six points, and he's got the task of going up against Chad Grounds and protecting the baseline from Tony Patterson and Jeff Oliphant. Rick Patbird coming out. One of the guards, 5'9", a junior, and he looks an awful lot like this young man, his twin brother, Ron Patbird. So we're just about ready to go. The fans are excited. And a pretty nice crowd. There aren't many empty seats, Morris, as I look no. around. Nice crowd. Officials <laughs> yeah. look ready to go, don't they? A lot of walk-ons. Yeah, we're ready to go. We've tap danced enough. Yeah. <laughs> LM Braves are on the floor. Riley Padgett comes out with Rob Flynn. Rob will get the start tonight. That's Swaby. Tony Patterson, Jeff Oliphant, and Chad Grounds. Pat Berg and Pat Berg, Ron and Rick. In the middle, Andy Nass, Steinhardt, and Yoko. Nass will go up against Oliphant. L&M in the dark jerseys, the light jerseys to Southridge, and it goes to the Braves. Ron Pat Berg. Rob Flynn has it. Around to Jeff Oliphant. Couple of dribbles and stops. Goes cross court, it's knocked out of bounds, but a nice defensive play by Rick Patberg. Southridge open up man to man. They get it around to Riley Patberg. Gets it to Chad Grounds. Riley Padgett, first shot of the game is hit. Riley Padgett had six in the first game, and he has the first two, L&M, 2-0. Two L&M you know, is in a zone, 2-1-2 two, two zone. It's like I thought that they would, you know, each team would open up. Ron Patford, back to his brother Rick. They've been playing catch. Ron goes a little deeper. Yoakum, back to... Pat Berg and he's home. Ron Pat Berg and we're tied at two. Well, they're off to a nice start. Got the crowd up. Rob Flynn gives off to Tony Patterson. Tries to go inside. Nice defensive play by Rod Steinhardt. And LM controls. Jeff Oliphant will be the trigger man. Gets it to Flynn, back to Oliphant. He had notions, passed it up. Flynn to Padgett. Riley holds up on the dribble around to Oliphant. Good defense. From the twilight oh. zone, Jeff Oliphant. Yeah. Two for two. No one's missed a shot yet. Rick Patbert, Yoakum. <laughs> four for four. Both teams are on fire. I got a feeling we're going to have a lot of points on the board tonight. Yeah. Grounds, Padgett, Oliphant to Flynn. Steinhardt's playing, playing pretty well out there right now. He's moving. Riley Padgett. Patterson. Ball thrown away, and it is Raider basketball. Rick Patberg. To Ron, back to Rick. To Nas, it was almost stolen. Rick, nope. Nas in to fight for the rebound, but there's Jeff Oliphant. Nas the bigger man, but Oliphant bulkier. Patterson tries to put a move on, draws a foul, the shot won't go. And is that Steinhardt? Steinhardt's down. That young man has taken a beating. He's up. 
Gary Duncan was up off the bench gasping he gets he wants Steinhardt to be in this basketball game Steinhardt's got Patterson that one won't go and comes the other way Ron Patford direct Yoakum nope ball comes off telling him almost stolen Stepping on the line is Chad Grounds. And a good defensive pressure there by Pat Berg and Steinhardt. So the Raiders, another chance to take the lead from the corner is Rick Pat Berg. Balls on the floor and a foul will be called on Yoko. For Todd, that's his first and it is the second on Southridge. So all and M will try and break the four all tie. 4.58 left to go first quarter. Glad you could join us tonight. The finals of the Evansville Semi-State. Traveling violation. All and M looks just a little tired. Just a little tired and the ball movement there not quite as fresh. That's what I was talking about. Those legs may, might wear out a little bit here. Rick Patberg, they move it around nice. There's Ron back to Rick. Nice pass. Go to Yoakum. Oh. It won't go for him. And the rebound comes back to Steinhardt. Goes up. No. Traveling anyway. Well, they started out hot. Yes. They've both gone cold. Turnovers. Big factor right now. Rob Flint. Padgett. Oliphant will drive in, dumps it underneath the grounds. He falls down, wanted a call, couldn't get it. He missed the shot. Ron Petper to Rick. There they go in the middle. Noss. Big Noss. That would be a nice confidence builder for him. Andy with two. Padgett takes it to the right side. Now they reverse it. Oh, Underneath what a, a big move by Oliphant. It won't go, but he's fouled. What a nice move, wasn't it? Gosh. He'll go and shoot a pair. Foul is on Andy Noss, who's first, and just like that, Here's three fouls. Nice power move. Three fouls for Southridge. On the line will be Jeff Oliphant, a 57% free thrower on the air. He is so strong in taking taking that ball up, you can't really stop it. Well, one more coming. It's a 6-5 Southridge lead. We're tied, and we have timeout with 3:54 left to go. A six-all tie. We'll be back after these messages. Semi-state basketball on 44. Southridge will have the ball. They are tied with LM at six. Both teams are shooting 50% right now. They go across to Ron Petberg. Tried to go to Nas underneath. Yokum's there, puts it up on the lane. Todd Yokum has four. Padgett, Flynn. They try and get it inside. Oliphant, two people on him, spins around. It won't go. The ball winds up in Steinhardt's hands. Southridge is playing awfully good defense right now. Yoko back to Steinhardt. They go to Nas. The pass goes through, but that's the luck they've been having lately. Yoko step back around. No. Tip up. No. The follow is in. You know, Patterson just hasn't hasn't touched the ball hardly. Steinhardt has two. Patterson really was the factor in the first half. Yes. The first there he game. goes. There he is. 
He's a player. That's why you're a coach. Yeah. <laughs> you notice those things. Yeah. Tony Patterson has two. You get your players the ball. Steinhardt. After that last shot, his ankle probably hurts a little bit less. There's oh, a nice steal. steal. Riley Padgett one on one. The laying goes. Riley has four. Turn it around. Tied up now. 10 10. <laughs> Yoakum, nope. Nas is there, off balance shot. Never had a chance. Not a good shot. Chad grounds. He was falling backwards, and he put it up. Paget. Grounds. Elephant. Here's Patterson. Takes a step in the paint. Nice spin move, and it goes. Tony with four of the last six LM points and the Braves ahead 12 10. A minute 30 left to go first half. And out of Pierce Southridge is standing around a little bit. Rick Patberg gives up Yoakum, goes cross court to Ron, stops and fires. No, gets his own rebound, goes in a little closer. That time it goes. Nice move. Ron Patberg with four. That was a big basket. If they wouldn't have, wouldn't have scored there. But, you know, change things around a little bit. Oliphant, one dribble between his legs, gives it back up to Flynn. Ball's on the ground, it's stolen. Southridge has a three on two. Petberg, nope. The rebound goes to Pat Patterson. All the way down, Oliphant. Yep. Just that quick. Jeff Oliphant was down as a sleeper. <laughs> For L&M, Archie Elliott is back in, in for the first time. In the first game, he didn't score, but played a few minutes. Does Tom Oliphant ever smile? No, I don't <laughs> think so. He is intense, isn't he? 40 seconds left to go. It's 14-12 L&M. That's what coaching basketball does for you. Beautiful nice. work inside, Andy Nuss. L&M's trying, you know, trying to trap here. Whenever you do that, you leave your back door open a lot of times. Nice. One shot. Nas caught their big people flat footed. Yeah. Yeah, Nim's gonna go try to go for one shot here. 14 all, 15 seconds left to go. Oh, still Stolen the ball. by Pat Burr. And a foul. And a foul on Archie Ellen mm. with 11 seconds left. Watch the tap by Ron Pat Burr. And as he's going for it, he's fouled by Ellen. So Southridge with the chance to go up by one. Steinhardt, six seconds left to Yoakum. Tries to get position. Goes cross court around Petberg. A whistle. And a foul, I believe, on Andy Das. Blocking foul there. Two seconds left. No, neither, neither team could get off a last second shot here. They might get one here, just a desperation, but neither team could, could come down and just set it up and get a nice shot off. There you sit. A last second shot doesn't go, so we finish the quarter and play to a 14 all time. We'll be back with the second quarter after these messages. The semi state final is only on 44. There's see one of the LM cheerleaders. First quarter statistics, L&M 6 of 10 for 60%. Southridge 7 of 16, 44%. Seven rebounds to five for Southridge. Five turnovers for L&M to two for Southridge. L&M wins the tap. And here they come. Patterson to Paget. Riley looks for something to send it to. It's at the grounds. Oliphant. One hander is there. Jeff Oliphant has eight. Again, another tremendous power move. The Oakham for the Raiders goes to Nas a little bit too deep, but he was bumped that way.
foul is on Elephant. For Jeff, his first, and you'll get a look at it again. I don't believe, believe that he could have made it anyway. And he knows. 19 to 38 on the year, a 50% free thrower. Gets that one to go home. No seniors on the South Ridge Club. And he now has six points already. He only had six in game one, so he is more of a factor offensively in this game. They brought Patterson out, out front now to handle the ball a little bit more. Just not getting the ball now. Grounds kicks out. And the rebound goes to Ron Patberg, who went over a much taller man to get it, Archie Ellick. Steinhardt back to Rick Patberg. Rick to Ron. They try it left side now. In the corner alone as Pat Bird, a run shot won't go, and the rebound goes to L M. They come the other way, Oliphant. Up in the air, a one-hander won't go, but a foul, I believe, on Andy Noss, and if it is, that's three. It is three for Andy Noss, and that might hurt. Could have gone the other way. Yeah, looked like he pushed off with that left hand. Ted O'Brien replaces Nas, who will probably have to sit out the rest of the half. Oliphant on the line. Misses that one. That's the first free throw he has missed all day. He came in shooting 55% for the line. He's up to the 57. Made all eight of his free throws in game one, and there's three of four in this one. He has nine points. Steinhardt. Those cross court, they like those cross court passes. They do as you know, as um, good a good a job of, of that as anybody around. Rick Petberg is first two. 18-17 Southridge. Good ball game, Bob. Fine ball game. Patterson Offense. will be called for the offensive foul. It's good defense. You know. Good defense. Watch him get set. Yeah. Holds his ground. Steinhardt takes a tumble. And that man is not playing injured. South or er, L and M come out. 616 left to go in the first half with a score. Southridge 18, L and M 17. This is the Evansville Summit State on 44. A slight momentum shift, Morris Clark, at least to the Southridge Raiders in the last few minutes. Yes, it's really been a third style right now, and they're playing such good, good defense, and that's the difference right now. L&M still looks a little tired. It's tough to play two, two games in the same day. Steinhardt to Yoakum, back to Steinhardt. He'll try it. Look at that. Four points for Ron. He had one in the first game before being injured, and he really is bounced back. I really can't believe he's playing with that sprained ankle like that. The way he limped out, yes. he didn't think he was yeah. going to play very much. Well, that they um, carried him out. <laughs> yeah. Turn over. Confidence right now for Southridge. Momentum's gone their way. Nas is, is out, and they're still playing very well. Look of concern on the face of Tom Oliphant as team trails by three. They've gone to man to man now. Look at the offensive movement as Yoakum hits. Oh, him's in trouble. They're down by five. Their mascot behind us trying to drum up the crowd. Need a basket. Oliphant, no. Rebound goes Sir. to Yoakum. Look at Yoakum, boy. He's into it. He is an excitable young man. Sure. That's what happens when you take a lead and get confidence going. Todd Yoakum, spin move. Boy, yeah. everything's going for him now. Sure. Eight for Yoakum. Seven-point lead. 
Padgett to Flynn. Back to Riley. He'll try it himself. Uh, that one's too strong. That's not the guy you want shooting there. Oliphant is a little bit concerned now. Yeah. You know, Patterson just doesn't get the ball, doesn't get the, you know, his shots. The ball goes out of bounds. It'll be Southridge, Southridge ball, and LNM wanted a call there. There's a little bit of holding. The Raiders lead 24-17, trying to extend it. Ron Petford back from his brother Rick. Rick has it now. The shot up and through, yeah. and it is working, O'Brien. Look at the Southridge fans, Bob. <laughs> Everybody's on their feet. The team, the fans, and detect a slight smile on Gary Duncan's face yeah. right now, 26-17. Browns won't go. They are boxing out yeah. well. But everybody's shooting the ball except the guys that should be shooting the ball as far as I'm, I'm concerned. Patterson hasn't touched the ball, hasn't shot forever. Steinhardt. O'Brien. Yoakum. Steinhardt has two men closed in on him, so they'll reverse okay. it to Rick Patper. It doesn't go on a foul. Will be called on Ted O'Brien. And l &M will come down this way and shoot it. You can see him go right over the back of Jeff Oliphant. So Ted O'Brien has his first. Six on l and or six on Southridge. Need these free throws for l &M. Jeff Oliphant wanted a bonus coming. Yeah. No, it was wide. It's tough, boy. You, know, you get down like this, the confidence, you lose the confidence. Ron Patford. Two more. Shot from nope. the corner. Won't go for Steinhardt. They get it back. Patford misses, and Oliphant the rebound. Wow. And he is fouled, tripped to the ground. O'Brien picks up his second. You can tell it's not easy covering Oliphant and Coach Oliphant not happy. Look how he falls hard to the ground. <laughs> look at Coach there. <laughs> hey, look of fatherly and coachly yeah. concern. With his team down right now, he has a lot to be concerned about. Southridge has got him on the ropes right now. Oliphant breaks the dry spell. And it's 26-18. There have been five fouls on the people covering Jeff. He has 11 points. He has 11, but only four for Tony Patterson, who averages 23 and a half. Three minutes, five seconds left to go. Southridge pass that ball around. From the Swish. corner, Rick Petford. They are hot. Nine point lead again, 28 to 19. Elephant. What a move. What a move. <laughs> you don't see many, many cars kids got moves like that. He is a big, strong young man. Ron Patbird takes a couple dribbles, gives it to Brother Rick. Picks it back out from Steinhardt. Kind of forced that one. Now a forced pass. The ball's on the floor and huh. traveling. Things just aren't going for LM right now. Coach is working over there, though. Rob Flynn finally comes out with it. He just picked the ball up. Moved. Nice O'Brien. O'Brien's playing strong in there right now. Nice sub. Ted with four. And once again, the nine point lead. Two minutes even left to go. In the first half. Patterson, no. Big Oh. No. And the 
Andre Bondo oh, no. O'Brien. There's a lid on it for L&M. They can go up by 11 here. And look at the confidence in the faces of the Southridge Raiders. I think Southridge is going to go for one shot. Momentum, well, if they turn this ball over now, they have poor time to do that. Steinhardt, Riley Padgett all over him. And they are putting the stall on. If they do go for the last shot, this will go on for another minute five. Yoakum, cross court, Rick Curran. <laughs> Smart, aren't they? <laughs> There's Yoakum. Southwich fans love it. 45 seconds left. L&M wants the one turnover. Yoakum, they got him a little deep. Turnover. Turnover. Long time to hold the ball. Patterson. He's up basket. to Flynn with 25. Get the ball to the shooters here. There we go. Out him. Got it. Mercy. That's what I'm saying. Get the ball into him. Patterson ought to be shooting the ball also. Those two kids are the ones going to carry him. 30-23, the lead down to seven. Rick Patford drives baseline, gets a little too deep, ball on the floor, and a jump ball. Five seconds left. Southridge cannot let LNM come down and then score. Not let them get a quick basket here. Cut it within five. They're getting ready to go. Steinhardt against Riley Padgett. And the ball goes to Southridge with two seconds. Way outside, it won't go, and we play the half. And the Southridge fans are very excited. Well, what happened in the second quarter to really to ignite Southridge? Well, you know, as I was telling you, telling you earlier today, is that they, you know, Southridge is a fine ball club. You know, that they're not doing anything different than what I've seen them do all year long, and they did that against us. So, um, really, this is this is a, a, a this is Southridge. This isn't some other team. This you know that they, they played this way all the time, and I'm really impressed with them. And uh, I'm really looking forward to this second half. We have Gene Cato coming in in at um, halftime to, to um, talk talk with you, Bob. And um, I'm looking forward to you know to that interview. The commissioner of the IHSAA will join us at halftime. The score is Southridge 30, L and M 23. We'll now take this break and be back to the Evansville Silver State, which is live on 44. Well, we're back at Roberts Stadium, 30-23. Southridge leads at the half, and this the championship game of the Evansville Semi State. Bob Ramsey now joined by the commissioner of the IHSAA, Gene Cato. And Gene, a great tournament so far. Well, we're real happy to see a full house, and we've seen nothing but excellent basketball here today. Well, this is really a credit. I know it's it's got to be a, a joy to run the IHSAA, knowing the support that a tournament like this gets. Well, uh, I've said this many times since becoming the commissioner. I think I'm the luckiest person uh, in the United States dealing in athletics because we have great news media coverage in Indiana and the support and I think many small schools and they kindly build their entire community around the high school sports program. Quite a story I guess this year down in this part of the state with l &M, a small school under 200 the two towns when you combine the populations make up about a thousand people that that's really a tribute to the kind of basketball played in this state. Well, I've been asked this afternoon several times, what if L and M would make it to the state next week? When did we have a smaller school in the final four? I can't uh, actually uh, answer that, but we might have to go back to 1915, 16 area when we had Wingate and Thorntown in there. This really has been a fun tournament. Now, you get to get around the state and, and see the support. What is the state of Hoosier basketball? Well, I think it's on very uh, sound uh, footage. Uh, 
we've had uh, last week at the regional tournaments several sellouts we've got a sellout today in Fort Wayne in fact it was sold out Tuesday by noon I think this is a sellout I haven't heard from the other uh, two sites but we feel you know we broke an attendance record in girls basketball and we think it's the cheapest entertainment in town and it is cheap and, and this really is heartwarming you know to come to a, a site like this and these are two small town schools fighting it out and up north some of the bigger towns are going so this really says a lot for the state uh, athletic association well uh, thank you uh, as you said earlier we have tremendous support uh, I think it's a tribute to communities that gets behind their athletic teams and I think it pulls communities together now I have a little phrase I say when you back and boost you build something better and I think that's what we're seeing here this evening you got a big job ahead of you next week but it should be an enjoyable tournament up there well I think uh, we'll find out who those winners are and we'll have another sellout I'm sure Gene Cato the commissioner of the IHSAA thank you for stopping by and enjoy the second half well thank you Bob very much we'll be back with the first half highlights and statistics right after these messages the Evansville semi-state is coming to you live on 44. Welcome back to Roberts Stadium. Just a couple minutes away from the second half, Southridge leading 30-23. And Morris, uh, if you're Gary Duncan, you got to be a little bit happy knowing that the teams play this well. And you got them all back next year. <laughs> yes, you are. You know, and the thing is that you're not down at uh, halftime by M7. And uh, I'm sure Coach Duncan uh, is uh, feeling good about his team's play there. And that the way South Southridge passed the ball and um, executed on offense and defense, right now, I think that they're in favor. I would have to pick them. Let's take a look at some of the highlights from the first half. And really, after an even first quarter, it was Southridge in the second quarter. But look at them pass that ball. They cross court the ball you know, as well as anybody. And that was one of the few steals, though. That time they got ca caught up, and Riley Padgett goes for the lay-in. L&M coming down here, and one thing they tried to do an awful lot, this time it worked, but it seems sometimes they tried too hard to get the ball into uh, Oliphant. Yes, and you know, that's the thing that, the, that they haven't used on Patterson. That's what I, what I was saying. You know, he can also, you know, play, and they haven't gotten, you know, you know gotten the ball to him more. And uh, I think that that's what the, what what they have to do. There's some you know some players shot the ball at some key times when they just didn't you know work the ball enough. But that's a that's a strong power move. That young man has a great future. He was mu much of the offense, but uh, his team really fell behind, being outscored 16-9 in the second quarter. We'll take a final break. Be back for the second half of play from Roberts Stadium. You're watching the Evansville Summer State live on 44. It's not a final, that's the halftime score. 30-23, Southridge leading. L&M were ready for the second half of play. Both teams in the first half shot 50%. Southridge just got more shots. And they win the tap on a second effort by Andy Noss. Starting off in a half-court trap. Ron Patberg back to Brother Rick. In the corners, Yoakum cross-court. Steinhardt kicks it back out to Ron Patberg. Now Yoakum has it. And you can see the defensive intensity is much improved already. Riley Patrick coast to coast. Six for Riley. L&M looks more intense. Right, they sure do. And they want to put the pressure on uh, Southridge right now. Steinhardt. It stolen Get away again. Oliphant gets run over. Now yes. it'll be a tie-up and a jump ball. Not a good start. Gary Duncan is not going to, you know, have him, you know, start off this way. And he's going to call timeout yes. right now. 7-10 left to go in the third quarter. The score, 30-25. Southridge will take the timeout and remind you. Well, a quick timeout, just 20 seconds into the third quarter called by Southridge to try and calm matters down. LNM controls. This is 
Bob Flynn. And it gives up to Riley Padgett. Flynn again. Elephant, strong. Okay, they cut the lead down to three points. Four nothing, scoring spurt by the L&M Braves. And they're right back in it. Yoakum is fouled by Riley Padgett. Riley's first. Yeah, just too aggressive. Yeah. They only had three first half fouls. I think Tom kind of got into him at the halftime. <laughs> Dressing room might have been a little hot. Rick Tatbert, Teron Yoakum. Todd has 10. Yoakum, he, you know, he is a gamer. And LM comes down quickly. Patterson. Good, the rebound elephant. He is playing tough right now. Gosh. 19 for Oliphant. And Southridge comes down. Rick Petberg gives to Ron. Two men closing on him, Yoakum. They try and go to Nas. And a brick wall by the name of Oliphant is in back of him. Steinhardt partially blocked. Missed and the foul. here comes L and L. They missed the foul there. Patterson, no, and a foul will be called on l and The foul is going to be on Chad Grounds, his first. The shots just aren't falling for Patterson here, though, on that one there. He's just a little bit tight. He needs it, you know, for one to um, drop. You can see him in, in the middle of the pack, and he's whistled for the foul. Now, Patterson only had four points at first half. He had 23 in the first game. Yoakum in the paint. Ball knocked up in the air. Who has it? l and oh. on the line is Riley Padgett. A couple of good attempts to save it in there. But what hustle. You know, they didn't have that hustle that first half. I think the old dressing room talk probably helped out here. They try and go to Knox. He gets it in. He was bumped all around the yeah. place. Eight for Andy Knox. 34-29, back to a five-point lead, almost a walk there. Padgett. Riley gets it back to Rob Flynn. Oliphant way up top. Flynn wants it, he gets a pick. It won't go, the tip up, no, now it's the rebound. Nice board by Nas. Chad Grounds knocked it away from Nas the first time, but it wasn't more, a uh, shot, it was more of a deflection up. Nice pass back to Steinhardt. Yep. Ron Steinhardt has six. Take a little win out of um, L&M L &M sales there. And they have a couple yes. of subs coming in. Flint, Padgett, Riley back to Flint. Patterson, no, it's front iron. The rebound put back nice up board. by Chad Grounds. Nice board. It's the first bucket of the night for Chad Grounds. Very double. Uh, a little bit of a problem on the dribble for Yoakum. I think they're going to try to keep fresh guards in the ball game for LM now. But with, with that half half court trap, you can only go at it so so long there. Mark Swaby in the ball game for l and This is Archie Ellett. This is Swaby. To Ellett. Archie, a couple dribbles, gives back to Patterson. He'll try a drive. Back from grounds. Elephant, no. Bodies on the floor. Through. The rebound put through by Chad Grounds as Rick Patberg gets up off the floor. I don't think Coach Duncan's too happy either. 36-33, Ron Patberg back to Rick. Pass in the paint, Yoakum. 
of Yoakum. He is a consistent ball player. 12 for Todd. And look at Gary Duncan on the other side. He is very excited. Defense. Oliphant. Back around to Ellett. The Steinhardt's played a heck of a ball game with that sprained ankle. He has played Patterson man to man here. Dogged him everywhere. Swaby. There's a shot. And it's up and through by Patterson. Tony's first point points of the second half. He has six in the ball game. 38-35. Patford around and through. Ron has six. South Ridge isn't dying. They're not going to quit. What a shootout here. 220 left to go in the third quarter. Swaby gives it to Oliphant. He'll go on a drive. Yoakum was there to bother him. The tip up, no. And the rebound comes down to Southridge. Steinhardt. Ron Patberg. There's Yoakum in the paint up high. It goes. Look at him. Well, he's excited. Timeout, LM. Todd Yoakum with 14. And Gary Duncan has an excited bunch of guys around him right now, and the coach is just as excited. And the fans, look at them up there. They're just ex as excited. 42-35, and everybody, it seemed, the so-called experts were talking about the winner of the second game was the favorite. Well, I'll tell you what, Southridge has represented itself very well. They sure have, and they have a fine ball club, and they can do some things with, with the ball the other clubs can't. Those guards at the Twins, you know, handle the ball out front so well. And Yoakum, you know, he, he, he's just a gamer. And, that, you know, he just, whenever they, that they need a basket, he's there. Board, he's there. And that's the difference between a lot of kids, you know. His presence is felt out there. You made a point before the ball game when we asked you if Southridge has the patience and the ability to keep patient when the team is making a run on them, and that has proved true. LM has tried a couple of runs here in the third quarter, and Southridge has held them off each time. They sure have, and that's a thing, you know, that's the difference, you know, that this ball club here, they may be all juniors, but they are experienced juniors. That they have, you know, that they started all, you know, almost all of them last year. They have been around, they've been playing playing together now, probably since they were in the in the sixth, sixth grade. So uh, these kids have played a lot of basketball. They play fine team basketball. And they play defense. They're awfully strong. The Steinhardt, he, he has smothered Patterson. Minute 40 left to go. Shot put up by <laughs> Oliphant is perfect. 21 for Jeff Oliphant, but he isn't getting much, much help. help, is he? Yeah. Ron slips, gets the ball back. Here's Steinhardt. He's running around there awfully good. Ron goes baseline. Travel. Steps on the line. It's a turnover. That was good defense. Oliphant jumped out there, held his ground. Look at Gary Duncan. He is really intense. He's stomping up and down the side, just threw his red towel. And here comes LM. Mark Swaby gives it off to Patterson. Back to Swaby. Grounds gives it back to Oliphant to Patterson. Oh my. It is stolen by Rick Patberg. 50 seconds left, and Southridge holds a five point lead. LM is going to have to do something in the fourth quarter if they want to go to the state tournament. Steinhardt. Confidence. He has eight. What a basket. Sit there and just pop that thing in like it's nothing. No pressure. We were talking about pressure of these kids. <laughs> Seven point lead for Southridge. 20 seconds left to go. Oliphant. 23 for Jeff. And a concerned look on his father's face. Basket here would be very important for Rick Southridge. Petford. Five seconds left. Steinhardt will Charles. go in. Bodies on the floor. Nobody will get a shot off. Well, 
There's one second left for LM to try. Steinhardt went a little bit too deep. Yeah, he should have taken that shot there. He had the time, pull up and take it. He had just made one. One second left. There's the shot by Oliphant. It is long and it is wide. So we have played three quarters to a 44-39 Southridge lead. Stay tuned, eight minutes of basketball coming your way next on 44. We have eight minutes of basketball left. Southridge in the third quarter, six of eight, 74%. L and M eight of 15, 54%. L&M outscored them, however, 16 to 14. This should be one heck of a quarter. L&M is going to have to pull back and get that adrenaline going. Tired as they may be. Jeff Oliphant and Andy Noss. And Oliphant wins, however, it goes to Southridge. Ron Patberg had to stop a second thing. Which basket yes. to go for? Steinhardt, there's Nas, he's too strong. And Rick Petberg is there, goes back to Yoakum. Yoakum. There's Mr. Clutch. And it's good. And Yoakum, is, like I said, he, he can't say enough good things about him. Fouls on Chad Grounds, his second. And they will get the ball back. Forty-six, thirty-nine. It was away from the shot. So Southridge gets the ball back and a chance for a four-point swing here. Nas kicks it back to Rick Patberg. Yoakum. Around oh. no tip up, no rebound elephant. And here comes LM on the run. Patterson running one-hander rolls oh, right across. Yeah. Big miss. I think they have to be a little bit more in control. In the corner, Steinhardt puts a fake on. Goes across to Ron Patberg. Baseline try is there. <laughs> Eight for Ron Patberg. Does, does not look good for Elnema. Does not look good for him. A nine-point lead. Oh, Elliott shot won't go. Ball tipped up in the air, and Yoakum is fouled. Foul is on Tony Patterson. And Tom Oliphant looks on with concern, and a couple of... Fair morning's back arm there. I don't know. LM has got to got to have them, you know, some type of a run here. This zone is just not working. This zone trap. Chad Grounds was called for number two. There they go and again. They've got a three on two out of this one. Two more. Yoakum with 18. It's now in double figures, 50-39, and if LM doesn't score here, they need timeout. Yeah. Rebound to Yoakum. To me, the wrong guys are shooting the ball for LNM. Two times down the row, the wrong guys are shooting the ball. They've got to get the ball in, in there low. And a foul. Steinhardt on the floor. The foul is on 42, Chad Grounds. His third into the ball game is Rob Flynn. And Rob Steinhardt. Now it'll be Ron Petberg to the line. A 71% free thrower. Nine points for Ron Petberg. The lead is 12, 51-39. 6.14 left to go, and there is Joy in Huntingburg. If anybody's up there. Yes. 
Looks like they're all right out, right a, across from us. Riley Padgett. Patterson underneath his grounds. A foul before the shot. Foul will be on Yoakum, his second. There you see it again. Yoakum is 40 and he bumped him. They have trouble finding someone to bring it into. Riley Padgett has it, gives it to Rob Flynn. Patterson from way out, around and out. Grounds back up is rejected. Padgett, it's short. Grounds again, finally it goes in for Oliphant. 25 for Jeff. A 10 point lead, 51-41. Pat Berg handle the ball. Round back to Rick. <laughs> those those twins are clever. They're very good ball handlers. And they will take their sweet time, Todd Yoakum. 5.20 left to go in the ball game. Southridge by 10 and a whistle. What do we have? A foul on l and &M. Foul is on Tony Patterson, his third. I believe that they fouled him on um, purpose. Duncan wants a, you know, two shots. The second on Patterson, one and one coming for Andy Nas. He was two of two in the first half, a 50% free throw on the year. <laughs> it's amazing. It is. I, I was telling you before, kids, you know, do some, you know, things at tournament time that they normally don't do. There he goes. He missed that one. And LM comes out, trailing by 11. Oliphant gets a rebound, goes off to Grounds. Chad Grounds is there. Six for Chad Grounds. 52 43, five minutes left. Rick Petberg goes right baseline, now dribbles back out. Steinhardt, four men on him. Rick's all alone. Mercy. While he hasn't shot much, you can't leave him that wide open. Patterson, no rebound, Yoakum, and he's fouled. Patterson's shots just haven't fallen tonight. That's been one difference. Riley Padgett is called for a second foul, and we got a timeout, l and 439 left to go, and Southridge holds a 54 43 lead. We'll take time out. The semi state coming to you live on 44. Richmond 78, Muncie South 61, I believe, was that final score. We hope to get those other semi-state scores and look at Tom Oliphant. Todd Yoakum on the line. 67% free thrower. That one goes. It's 55-43. Thing about South Southridge is that this is not just, you know, a one game, you know, where that they have really, really looked, looked good. You know, they have done this all year long, too. They are a good ball club. 20 points for Yoakum. Oliphant. No, and it goes to Ron Patberg. Three people around him. That means a lot of other people are open. Nas. The big guy. 11 for Andy at 6 in the morning session. 58-43, and it's turning into a blowout with 4.10 left to go. Around no. The rebound down to Steinhardt. And a foul will be on Oliphant in second. Four minutes, three seconds left to go. And a very dejected look. Yeah. 
He's going for the basketball, but got a couple swipes in on there. Ron Steinhardt will go to the line. He's a 59% free thrower on the year. Nothing but net. I believe it's going to be Southridge's night. It's all Southridge now. A 16-point Raider lead. That one goes. Ten points for Ron Steinhardt. Sharpen up the scissors. He's played the whole game. Look at the defense in a yeah. steal. Pat Bird yeah. continues the dribble. Rod Pat Bird is fouled, and what a job he did there. He's holding his knee. He went down hard on the floor. Rod Pat Bird went down hard on the floor, kept the dribble knowing that if he stopped it, he could go for a travel. Look at this, Coach. Yeah, he's such a competitor. Look at him. <laughs> Fine job. And he tries to move away from the defense to gain control. My goodness, third foul on Jeff Oliphant, and here's Ron Patberg on the line, one and a bonus. Oh, Duncan over, smiling, look at him, <laughs> ear to ear. Can't believe it. Mark Swaby back in for Allen. Gary Duncan wants to hide his face sure. in that towel till it's all over. Yes. Wake me when it's over. Eleven for Ron Patbert, 62-43, a 19-point lead. Patterson, no. Rebound, Swaby, no. Ball knocked around. Riley Paget, partially blocked. That won't go. Oliphant, been around, no, but he's foul. We got an injury. I believe it's just light cramp. It's Rick Patberg on the floor, and his brother, the leg rest cramp. of the team, it is a leg cramp. He's back up, he's fine. He's walking it off. And with 3.34 left to go, it's a 62-43 Raider lead, Oliphant on the line. He's done a tremendous job tonight. But he has been the offense. Nope. It's just not their night, Bob. Twenty-six for Jeff Oliphant. The Braves average seventy-nine points a game, and they have been held to forty-four so far. Around no, the tip no. Ron Petberg. Johnny on the spot. 13 for Ron Patberg. Almost a walk. Riley Padgett is there. Riley with eight. 64-46. Can he catch Down it? all Big alone. Guy Nas. He's going to shoot it. <laughs> and he scores. My goodness. 13 for Nas. He was all alone oh. and was thinking a little bit too yes. much. He got the ball and then put it in. And, uh, the shot and the rebound comes down to Steinhardt. Yoakum is on the line. It's a turnover, 66-46, a 20-point Southridge lead with 2.49 left to go. Into the ball game for the Braves is Steve Foster. It's the first time he's been here. Out goes Riley Padgett. Steve averages just under a point. He's a 6'3 senior. Riley Padgett very upset on the sideline. Oliphant. He hasn't said die yet. 28. Tremendous shooting range, doesn't he? All over. Knocked from behind. Almost a turnover. It'll be out of bounds to Southridge, but Chad Grounds made a dive for it. An 18 point Southridge lead. They have the basketball. Ron Patberg back to Yoakum to Rick. Rick. Yep. 
Eight points for Rick Patberg. There's Patterson. Tony with eight. Ron Patberg, he wanted to give the alley-oop to Nas. Nas. Oh, boy. Nas with 15. He averages 10. Patterson, he's fouled from behind by, it's offensive. Uh, nice came on, on the floor. There was no, no need for that. You see it again, Patterson. And on Patterson, that's three. Out of the ball game goes Chad Grounds. Yelkum. Calls timeout. He's injured. He's come up with a cramp. Net. He's going to walk right out of the ball game. That's an, uh, an indication, I guess, coach, of the fact that they have played an awful lot of basketball yes. today. That's why that they have been talking about going to the Friday Saturday, which I'm really in uh, favor of. It's tough for a high school kid to, you know, or, or any, anyone to try to play back-to-back -back games here in in the same day. I can I can I can remember playing um, that you know that that type of game and, and coming coming back at night and and uh, in that second quarter my 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 legs felt felt like bricks there and uh, just cannot keep it up. Southridge has called it second time out of the ball game. Southridge is no fluke, folks. They are for real. That they played the same way when they beat 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 us there at at our home court and. Uh, like I said, they just pass and handle the ball as well as anybody in the area. And uh, LM just hasn't shot well tonight. Patterson has had an off night. Again, you know, that they played well. Patterson had had such a fine game this afternoon. It's just hard to expect a kid to go back to the to the motel, you know, lay down, get back up, and come back out here to, this evening. There will be quite a caravan going down Interstate 64 East tonight. Yeah. The horns will be honking, won't they? Ron Steinhardt, who you really have to give a lot of credit to. You can't go that way. Over and back. Rick Tatford a little bit upset with himself. On the turnover, Mark Swaby will key it in for l and John Elliott in the ball game for the first time. That shot won't go for Patterson. The rebound, no. And here comes Easy layup. L and M or uh, Southridge. Ron Petford by himself. Ron with 15 points, 72-50. A minute and a half left, a 22-point lead for the Southridge Raiders. And they've cut it back to 20. Yelkum. And that's a sign of the soldier ball player kick it out and get some time off the clock. They've got it well in hand. Both teams are so tired right now. They can hardly even try to attempt to even steal a ball. Here's Nuss. And back out by Ron Patford. Here's Rick to Nuss. He oh, missed the lay-in. Doesn't matter now. It's all over. Nice move by Oliphant. Can't get it to go out of bounds. To L&M. 72-52 and a lot of the L&M players will get a chance to play. And here go the starters for Southridge. And look at the excitement on the Patburg twins as they head back to the bench. Let's get a shot of the Raiders bench. And Tom Oliphant comes down and is shaking the hands of the players for Southridge. You can see a dejected look on him. Good sportsmanship, though. That's the thing, nice thing about high school basketball. This has been a dream season for the L&M Braves, and they have nothing to be ashamed about. No. I know a lot of you folks watching up in the Green County area or watching on Vincent's cable vision are very disappointed, but be proud of this team. They have played very well. The move by Bennett won't go. The turnaround shot will not go for 30. 
34, Mike Hillsmeyer. We go the other way, and a lot of substitutions are in. Rebound, and the shot is up and through for Wade Shank. 17 seconds left to go till the Southridge celebration goes. Bennett's shot, no. Rebound shot up, won't go, and they'll try till they get it right. The turnover, Tony Ressler. Listen to the crowd over there. Oh. Three seconds left, and that bench on the southeast end of the stadium will explode. Look at the smile on Gary Duncan's face. <laughs> and folks, he has these people back next year. Yes. I don't believe Gary's going to be going anywhere. <laughs> the ball will be a side out on the foul. Well, he's worked hard up there, and uh, it's all the hard work really pays off now. This floor is going to be a mob scene in three seconds. That's it. it. The Southridge Gary... <laughs> He did a flip. Gary Duncan did a cartwheel. Look at the excitement at midcourt. The Southridge Raiders are the Evansville Summit State Champions. And they're going to Market Square Arena. The final score, 72 to 54. We'll take this final time out and try and talk to some of the happy participants right after these messages, the Evansville Semi-State is live on 44. Welcome back to Roberts Stadium, 72-54. Southridge is the Evansville Semi-State champion and coach, they're gonna start talking about Southridge like they deserve to. This is our year. For some reason, it all fell in place. And uh, you know, when you, I told I told somebody after the seventh day, I said these guys just got a perfect ball game in them. And I'll be, they just about had it tonight. Coach, these are 16 and 17 year old young men. The composure was amazing. Well, I tell you, they're intelligent young men. That's that's the big difference right there. They're all in the upper third of their class. Uh, you talk to them what they're supposed to do. They go out and do it. And uh, we hit the basket at night. I just kept getting fired up on defense, and they started missing their shots. And they did, there in the second, uh, fourth quarter, there one time, they got three or four shots to basket, which is all they got all night a lot of times. Ron Steinhardt had a tremendous game. He's injured. He walked out during the player introductions limping. I didn't think he'd make it to the start of the game. Well, I'll tell you the truth, I didn't either. But I'll tell you what, we had a Pat Burke boy do the same thing in the regional, suck it up, and Steinhardt, he, he just amazing. He wanted to do it so bad, he could commit, he uh, convinced himself he was going to do it and he, tonight, and he did. You guys put on a clinic. The two Patford boys and Steinhardt spent about half the game on the floor diving for basketball. Well, you know, I just, I just don't know what to say anymore. I just, I'm just so happy. I'm so relieved. Uh, it's just something that, you know, I never thought I'd get to do it a lifetime. Here I'm getting to do it. I got him back. Watch out, Huntingberg. You got a big celebration tonight. Oh, yeah, I'll tell you what. It's going to be a good one. Well, you're the representative for Southern Indiana. And we all wish you the best of luck in Market Square. I appreciate it. Gary Duncan, congratulations. The coach of the winning ball club tonight, the Southridge Raiders, with a record of 23 and 4, head on to Market Square Arena in Indianapolis. And the coach now is surrounded by the media here as he will take his team. And mind you, this team is made up of some very, very young players. No seniors on this ball club. If we can take one more break, we'll try and get a couple of the players and come back to Robert Stadium. This is the Evansville Semi-State coming to you live on 44. <laughs> Wins the ball game 20 by a score of 72-54. As you can see, it's a mob scene here on the floor as the media and the fans are surrounding the winning Southridge Raiders. They will move up to Market Square Arena next week 
to be in the final four of the Evansville Summer State Tournament. And my partner, Morris Clark, is joining me. They want to talk to a couple of the players, but uh, they, they're being mobbed out there. Yeah. A great ball game. Yeah, the, uh, you know, the, 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 the all, now it's fun. You know, now's the time to enjoy it. All that sweat and effort that, that they put into the game and to the practice time getting, getting here really makes it all worth worthwhile. And to believe that these young men are juniors and sophomores. Yes, and uh, like I said, now we got to go up there next year, and uh, that's tough. But I tell you that they, you know the people and the uh, sports writer might you know be uh, talking about Southridge uh, next year, like 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 they have talked about L L and M, &M this year. It is uh, nothing for the fans of L and M to be upset about. You can see a lot of teary faces in the crowd over there on the on the west side of the arena but they have nothing to be ashamed of they played a very very good game yes that yes, they have and you know this has been a great season it's just a shame you know whenever you get here that 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 you do have to have to lose here he is let's let's bring in ron stein uh, ron a great ball game you walked out during the player introductions you could hardly walk i it was really stiff warm-ups i could hardly go i didn't think i was gonna be able to play and once the little game got going, it loosened up, and I forgot about it and felt really good. I can't feel it right now. I, I thought after you made that first shot from the outside, you were cured. Uh, I guess that cured it, I hope. Well, tell me about this club. You guys are all going to be back next year, but you got next week at a market square to think about. It. Yeah, we're not going to worry about next year or anything. It's right now. We're playing right now, and that's all that counts. You guys really do a great job of holding your composure. They made a couple runs at you, but... You never said die. A lot of times we get teams up like 20 or something, we'll let them right back in. And that's tonight we held them back. How long have you guys been playing together? Well, all those guys have been playing together about fifth or sixth grade, and I just moved here when I was a freshman. So I got the flow of things with everybody, and we're all playing together real well. Can you believe next week you're in the Final Four? I can't believe that. It's great, though. It's one of these things, I guess now, you're going to get the respect that uh, you guys have said all season long this team deserves. Well, it, it, respect, you know, it just comes as we go, but it's all right. It's going to be a great drive down I-64 tonight, isn't it? It's going to be great. Well, congratulations. Your Southern Indiana's representative do a great job up there. Thank you. Thanks, Ron. Ron Steinhardt, a man who was injured in the first game today and came back tonight to do a great job. Morris, tell us about next week up at Market Square Arena. Well, everybody's going to be really, really, you know, th there won't be anybody in um, Huntingburg next weekend. So uh, I think that that, uh, that they will represent us real well, and I'm really looking forward to watching them up there. I am, I am going up, and next week I'll get to set up in the stands and just, just relax and, um, you know, watch them play well. You know, the interesting or the kind of unfortunate thing, I guess, for uh, Southridge now is, They'll get to celebrate it tonight. They'll probably get the day off tomorrow, but Monday they start preparations for Final Four time. Oh, it's it's fun now. You can't wait to get to practice now. These guys, Monday, you know, that they'll be excited, and then, then you know, it's it's going to take you know a couple of days just just for them to come back down down to uh, to earth. And uh, so I'm real pleased about this. You know, can Southridge do it up there? Yes, um, I think that they can. Uh, Marion is awfully strong. They got the six foot ten center, but you, you just never know at this high school level. Whenever you play back to back games, who would have known known tonight? Well, that is just about it from Robert Stadium. The Southridge Raiders will take a look at some of the highlights, and as you can see, the second half really was Southridge. Yes, and again, they kept passing the ball well. This is the first half yeah. highlights. Uh, you see, you see these at halftime, where L and M did play very well but still Southridge in that second quarter opened it up yes and then they came right back in that second half that's what the thing uh, that I really was uh, surprised LM came came back and almost tied the game up but Southridge didn't fold and that's what uh, is what is a trademark of a, of a yeah, fine ball game you see that the difficulty some of the time in this ball game to get it inside. They do it successfully here to Oliphant, and he makes a nice uh, shot, but they couldn't get it to Patterson. When they did, he was rather cool. Yes, yes, and uh, that's one of the things, you know, uh, Patterson only, what, scored eight to points, uh, and uh, then, you know, Jeff Oliphant just couldn't do it all by himself, 
And uh, again, Southridge played fine defense. They uh, really helped to, you know, uh, they played good team defense. And uh, so the shots just really didn't fall for uh, LM tonight. You can see the frustration here. Several shots missed by LM. They finally got this one to go. You think by this highlight film that LM was the game winner, but that really wasn't the case. Southridge was the winner tonight. And a lot of frustration. There is the winning coach, Gary Duncan, as his club won the ball game tonight. Let's take a look at the scoring. First for LM, Jeff Oliphant was the leading scorer in the ball game. He had 28 points for LM, 10 points for Tony Patterson, and a lot of those came late in the ball game, six late in the ball game. Eight points for Riley Paget. He had to launch it late in the game when they started falling behind. Six for Chad Grounds. Two for Wade Shank late in the ball game. For the victorious Southridge Raiders, they were led in scoring by Todd Yoakum, who had an even 20, 15 for Andy Nuss, and he got some real nice passes on the inside. 10 points for Ron Steinhardt, uh, the man we interviewed, who really uh, came through in kind of a heartwarming instance for him as he was injured in game one, limped out in game two, and played very well. Eight for Rick Patberg, as we said, 15 for Ron Patberg. Four for Ted O'Brien, who was called in after Andy Nuss took three fouls in the first half. Next week, back up at Market Square Arena, we will be there. Channel 44 will join the statewide IHS AA network for coverage of the Final Four from Indianapolis. That all begins next Saturday morning, and we will be with you next Saturday night through the state final. So the high school basketball continues. A couple of program reminders for you. The Dick Walter Show, the final Dick Walter Show, will be with you tomorrow night at 10 o'clock as Coach Walters will tell you about his future. We'll salute the seniors and talk about the past season with the Aces and what Coach Walters sees ahead for the program. That's tomorrow night at 10 o'clock. And if you're in Huntingburg, if you're one of the few remaining in Huntingburg, I believe your team's coming home tonight. And you've got quite a celebration. So, Morris, a uh, whole new situation for Southridge, but everybody has to be happy. Everybody has to be happy up at um, Southridge. It's been a fine, you know, season. And um, I know, you know, that, that, that they will represent us very well. And um, I'm sure that, uh, that the, uh, you know, some, something that with a little, you know, suds or something up there in <laughs> Huntingburg might be popping tonight. And they'll be having a good time up there. Well, all the friendly spots will be packed, but... Once again, nothing for l and to be ashamed of. They went through the year 28 and two, and not many teams do that. No, and I really feel sorry for them. You know, it's always tough to see that loser go out. And again, somebody has to do it. And you know, you know, the, the old coach says, "Why me?" But again, if they did well, and you know, that, that they represented, you know, um, l and very well, that the team did, and uh, it's been a great season for them. And I'm sure that they have nothing to, you know, to be ashamed of, and they won't, that they'll have their heads up going going home. And again, with Southridge, didn't really surprise me how that they play tonight. They have been doing it all season long with their passing, with their defense, and their shooting. They have scored well, and a fine team, team, team play. Real nice job. Uh, Morris, it's been a pleasure working with you, knowing that you have to face the yeah. same exact team next year with your central team. Well, we will, and um, we, you know, we will have a, a um, good, good ball club next year and Bob it's been fun working with you and I want to thank 44 for uh, letting me do this. We appreciate your help and thank you Morris Clark. That'll do it tonight from Robert Stadium reminding you once again Southridge is the Evansville semi-state winner 72-54 over l &M High School. Next week the final four here on 44. We'd like to thank you for joining us here on our coverage of the semi-state and all year long with high school and Aces basketball on 44. For producer Dan Healy Director Jay Strasser, my partner Morris Clark, I'm Bob Ramsey. So long for now.